So while I'm waiting for the delivery of new ICs that fail in a spectacular way on my HP power supply, I decided I would take a little side project here and get this uh, pulse generator going which is in HP 8082A uh, I love those pulse generators, they are, they are super fast and they have the, the magic button which is leading edge and tra trailing edge uh, control which is uh, really useful when you work with core memory so this instrument of course I bought it for cheap uh, and it was sold as non-working and not turning on and as advertised, it doesn't show that it's turning on, uh, but it might just be that the light bulb is out. So I you know, try to see if I got something on the output, so I connected to it. And I got mostly nothing, except that I could see, where is it? I could move the offset. So that told me that, yeah, it has power. And then after playing with the buttons, I put it onto square wave. And yes, it has a square wave at, let's say 60 kilohertz. That's probably about the right frequency, I didn't check. Uh, but yes, it appears it's in the right range. So that's another good news, uh, but no pulses. Uh, and on any ranges until I put it in the double pulse mode and in the double pulse mode I got pulses but just one instead of two uh, and actually one thing that I, have that I have not checked is to see if I'm getting the delayed pulse uh, because it has a delay compared to the trigger or the immediate pulse and my my thinking is that I'm getting the immediate pulse let's check that so now I have hooked up the uh, trigger signal and this is exactly what I thought is the pulse delay does not affect that so I'm getting one pulse out of two which is uh, good news bad news because it might be one of the delay delay ICs that's dead in there and those are totally specific for from this you no know, made specifically for these machines so this uh, beautiful instrument was designed in germany in bublingen i am told from the uh, great hp memory site and um it's old it's from 1974 uh, but despite it being old, it has you no know, one nanosecond rise times. So actually, it is faster than my scope here, which is 200 megahertz. Actually, that's um, that's a shame because I'm sure the electronics in there can do way more. But they they they, they, they just uh, make it work slow, so you pay more to unlock it. And to make it that fast, they had to make some specific circuits. Because if you were to build it out of transistors uh, or op amps, the, the wiring inductance would just be too high. And then you can see this, the uh, um, purpose made circuits, and they are just made for this instrument, so they are just unobtainium. The other good stuff is that they, uh, they drive quite a bit of voltage, and you get a positive and a negative output. Uh, great exter external triggering it's just a great simple pulser uh, when we work with uh, core memory that's the one i used uh, to create pulses that had a control uh, leading edge oh make sure it works uh, so here's my core Boop. let's see if we can see the leading edge in action uh, let me make my pulse bigger there we go Big pulse, and then I have control of the. Oh, that's not working either. So that's not working properly. It should make a leading edge from the bottom. And let's see if I can slow down. And that's not working properly either. It's not the same scale on both. whoa oh it's all so it's all messed up so 
Huh, so we have a few things not working on that thing. Let's see if we can figure out what. And actually that's the block diagram and it already tells us where the fault is likely to be. So the way this works, they make the pulses bit by bit. Here is the oscillator that produces a square wave, but what they do, they take the square wave, they delay it, they invert it. I think they have a diagram about it. Yeah, that's how they do it. So you just go have one pulse, put the other one, delay it to nanosecond, and you have this very small pulse, uh, which is actually going to challenge my scope. All what's left is a very small pulse like this. And in normal mode, it goes through a delay, and then it goes through the width, so they, they add the width <laughs> to the pulse. So here it gets this little text, and here there's a little uh, I see with capacitors that adds width to it. And what happens is that in the double pulsed mode, they also add the non delayed pulse. And so you get two pulses that are added to the delay. So, what obviously is happening is that I'm getting this one and I'm not getting that one. So my guess is that the delay generator here is not working, which could be a problem because this is one of those specialty made circuits. They, they, they even give you, there it is. They, they even give you the, the circuit or the IC. You can't find it unless you get another instrument. I have printed my schematics so we have the whole thing full scrolls a3 a4 a and b those are very very dense four and a5 uh, a4 is where most of the business happens my delay is right here and it gets the non-delayed and the delayed and the non-delayed gets switched right back to the output and the delayed goes through the circuit. Uh, but somehow it's not delaying my pulse. So we're going to first check that we have all the good inputs and see where we lose the output. And by the way, I have, I know I mentioned I have non-delayed, I have non-delayed and I have SW, that's the square wave. So I think that's probably the first one you want to check. And they arrive to the board via cables. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try to see if I can see all my pulse entering the board. And I can, they're not easy to probe down here, but they're easy to probe over here. So there's three coaxes, you see them right here. I'm not sure which one that is. Well, that's the square wave. And that's the slow one when I get into the fast one, okay. And that's one of the output pulses, either the delay, the one that's going to be delayed or non-delayed. So that's all working and of course this the scope is at its limit, right? This is faster and it can resolve and here's the other one. Oh, here is nothing, so here's the one. Oh well, hey! We have found our problem. And it's not where I thought it was. We might have a problem on board A3, even before the delay here. So change of plans here, I need to look at A3 and I think I see where the problem is. The chip that generates the square wave is this one and it's obviously working fine. But then the chip that makes the difference of the two and create a short pulse is this guy. The signal enters here, we checked it, it's good. And it doesn't come out here, so it's U2. Dang, okay, well let's, let's disconnect the cable and check that it's not, it's the chip that's certainly not functioning and that it's not um, shorted at the other end. So fortunately this is built like an RF instrument with detachable cables, it was this guy. Okay, we got it dangling out here. Let's see if it has reappeared. Nope. Okay, so the fold is 
on board A3. But that makes me think that if I don't want to double, there, there, there might be a way around it. If I, uh, the delay is quite important because it puts a delay between your trigger and your pulse. So that's a very important functionality. But if I don't want of the double pulse, could I swap the two? Probably not because one is inverted compared to the other. I bet you, yes. My idea is I you know if I have just one output that works, just swap the two. Except they are, it's ECL output, they are opposite of each other. So if I just put an inverter, I would fall back on, uh, on the correct polarity. So that's one possible workaround without having to find a circuit. So we can check if we have a continuity problem. That's delayed as the one that's not working. And nope, it's making it to the pin of the circuit. There's nothing between this and the circuit, it's just one trace, and that should be 50 ohms. It is so, yeah, so that's it. That's the fault. That's this weird ECL I see. That's 5081310 HP only. It's that fellow IC seal package. Before I spend more time on this machine to make a replacement circuit for my failed IC, I wanted to see uh, if I could do something about the other problem, which is the rise time control, which wasn't working all the time, and is I think probably the most important feature of this instrument. It takes almost half the machine to make this thing happen. And uh, I adjusted the whole thing and it's uh, better. It was very much out of adjustment, I think, to compensate for the fold. So now it's pretty clear what happens. In the faster um, setting, it works fine. And then the next range, which wasn't working, now that it's adjusted properly, is working fine. On the next one, you can control separately the two, the leading edge and the trailing edge. Now in the range afterwards, that's where it starts to be problematic. And no, here it's really not working. Next range, I need to make the bigger pulse again. Same thing happens, and next range, and the next range is good again. It's perfectly fine, so it's only two ranges. Because the good news is that the um, the circuit, the integrated circuit, uh, which is HP specific, seems to be working, but not in all the situations. So it's probably in some of the peripheral components that the problem resides. So unfortunately, this is one of the most complicated pearl shaping circuits I've ever seen. And it's explained in the manual with three simplified diagrams, but it's even more complicated in the real schematics. And it, it spans uh, the three boards in the machine. But the gist of it is that they have uh, current sources that uh, charge uh, capacitors in a differential pair and they turn the capacitors on or off with the incoming pulse that comes from the width shaper so it comes in as a square wave and with this complementary on either sh uh, side and because it has to charge charge the capacitors uh, through the current sources uh, it precisely uh, adds an, a, a trailing edge and a trailing edge and a leading edge and it's super complicated because they have to do it differentially for the trailing and the leading edge. And at higher speeds, they use the intrinsic capacitance of the transistor. Then they add other external capacitors. Then they have you no know, level limiters. And it's just a whole complicated mess of current sources. We can look at this that they all switch in and out to one, two, three, four, five, six current sources, seven, eight, nine, ten of them all switch. And then it gets even more complicated 
because it's followed by two different amplifiers depending if you go fast or uh, slow and it's a real complicated thing however I have an inkling of what's happening I think my circuit has to be working fine and my current sources have to be fine because it works in most of the settings here is the the pair that charges and discharges and the uh, and, and the level generators which I checked and uh, they are all tuned properly now uh, and then the amplifiers afterwards they seem to be working fine because I get a nice pulse and here's the bank switching of the capacitors so first setting there's nothing added second circuit uh, there's nothing added it's still relying on the capacitance of the transistors but the current sources are swapped and then on the four other settings they, they swap in more capacitors they are, they are right here and they come in pairs because this is all differential so the cap switching happens on the A4 board and it's those four pair of transistors uh, that switch capacitors and they are start small and get bigger and you can see there is one for each of the, uh, the lines of a differential signal so there is this one as a pair and so on and so forth then there is this pair and there is another pair my thinking is that maybe on some ranges one of the cap is switched in and not the other one I have now two probes so I, I see the two difference uh, the, the two differential signals so I am I'm looking at this which sniffs this line and this one which sniffs this line so those two lines are two differential lines and as predicted you can see exactly what's happening so that's on one channel that works or on one setting that works and this is all fine and dandy you can see how the two differential signals are nice and symmetric and I think the next range is one that's not working yep so you see one that's not working and sure enough you see one side is doing what it should that's the green and the other side is not so I bet the other capacitor has not been switched in then pushed it one more and on the next revision it's the contrary is the, uh, the, the green that's misbehaving and the yellow that's good I have this curious thing when one of these transistors on one side is not working on that range and the transistor on the other side is not working on this range I have to figure out which one it is that would be a weird failure I have found the two transistors that don't work um, is Q62 and Q59 so I'm on this pair right now so I'm looking at something that should be symmetrical right on both of those and so right now they are not selected and then I go to the range where they should be selected and you see only the green one gets selected the yellow should have been ground and it's not the, the one that's attached to the yellow transistor is a faulty one now connected to this pair of transistors and something similar happens so we see the that's the previous range and we already see that it's, it's unbalanced and then I go to where the range I'm probing should be selected and you see that only the yellow line is uh, selected in that case and the green is failing so we have a reverse fault in the, in the range afterwards okay so I think we have found our batch transistors now let's get them out of there and replace them okay here's our board it's kind of a painful one to extract as many connections you can see there's a delay line here and there are two circuits I don't know if those are the amplifiers or they are the pulse shaping you can see a little bit of it seems dangerous to remove the ceramic circuits and I'll probably try to pry them off from this side two pins three pins okay got one and then I can probably clean up the solder from the top and okay so unsurprisingly this is a good new transistor and this one is the one we just took out of the board so 
no transistor mojo in the ones we took out as expected this is all very inconvenient but better than solder them from the bottom it didn't work Okay, so I put my board with uh, where we have replaced the transistor that have no mojo with transistor that have good mojo and see if that works. Second setting, it worked too, it still works. And then the third setting that didn't work, ah, now it works. There we go. Other scale, which is this one, and oh yes, it's repaired. It does work. Okay. Okay, so now I have to make sure that this is well centered. Now I will be able to complete the calibration, which I couldn't do before because it was all wonky. All right, I think I have it now picture perfect. The zero at a zero, the five volts is at five volts. And look at that, I can control the edge of the pulses totally independently. Beautiful, I make core memory work in any way we want. And of course I replaced the bulb which was broken with an LED and cleaned up the switch so it works. So that is repaired also. And it, it works well enough that I am tempted to uh, do the modification and add a, a little reproduction gate that uh, fixes the, the, the gate that I'm missing. And uh, just for the chuckle and the challenge, because uh, it doesn't make much financial uh, much financial uh, sense, these, these are cheap enough that you just would buy another one and um, just steal the board from it. But what's the fun in that? So I already made the circuit and I made a little board out of it with surface mount transistors. For now, we'll consider our HP 82 8082 repaired and uh, when the board comes back we'll have some fun and see if we can repair it 100 percent 